Hello, and welcome back to the Foundry development videos. Today I wanted to cover the basics of your first macros, uh, some useful ones, and answer some of the most common questions people usually ask in Core How To um, in the Discord channels. To get started, we're going to be using the simple world building system, but everything that I'm going to teach you is going to be system agnostic. So you can use the D&D system, you can use the Savage Worlds, Pathfinder, whatever system you play, and use the same exact API methods. The stuff I'm going to be teaching you is how to interact with the Foundry ta virtual tabletop software. Um, so go ahead and install that, create a fresh test world. Uh, I already have a test world, so I'm going to use this. Uh, make sure you select simple world building, and go ahead and click launch, and I'll see you there. Before we write any macros, the first thing that I wanted to teach you was actually how to interact with the console. The console, um, as a developer, is going to be your best friend. Um, so to open the console, you're going to hit on Windows the F12 key. Um, if you are on uh, Mac, I think it's Command-Shift-J. Uh, if you're on Linux, uh, you can look up what the key strokes are on Linux. But if you hit F12, uh, you'll get this console. And console is basically where all of the messages that a developer needs to output when their code is executing are going to be outputted. So if there are any errors, you're going to find them in console. Often when something breaks uh, and you're asking about what happened, why did something break, uh, the person who wrote that software is going to ask you to open the console and see if there's anything highlighted red. Uh, highlighting red means that's an error. Copy paste the error. That helps us figure out where something went wrong. Um, a couple of things in the console. Right now my console is undocked. If you go up here, you can actually dock it to the left or right side. Uh, I'm going to dock it to the right side. That way we we have it open and we can use it as we uh, do this video. Uh, there's a lot of messages already on the console. None of these are relevant to us, so I'm going to go ahead and hit clear. Uh, you can use the clear command like so. Um, or, and let me zoom in a little bit on the console so you can see it a little better. Uh, you can use the clear command like so or you can hit this clear console button, like so. Now that we have a clear console, um, I want to show you how to explore some of the game system data. So there are a couple of big um, variables, um, global constants uh, in Foundry. The one that you're probably going to be using the most is game. Uh, game is an object with a bunch of different um, nested objects inside of it. So game object, for example, if you wanted to see all the actors that are in your world, you can do game.actors, and it will print out a mapping of all the actors. So we can see we have two actors, and we go to the actors directory, there's two actors. Uh, this one is the bad actor, we can see it here, name bad actor, and the other one is going to be the test actor. Um, and this is really useful because now you can explore the actual data model. Not just what they look like when you click on them, but what, do, what are they represented by inside of Foundry. When we write code, this is not relevant to us. The, the sheet, the way it looks, is not relevant to us. What's relevant to us when we write code is how to access the data that Foundry sees. Because we're telling Foundry to do things based on this data. So if you do game.actors, you can see information like this. If you do game.packs, you'll be able to see the compendiums. And if I go to compendiums, I have some test compendiums here. Uh, if I go to game.journal, I'll be able to see my journal entries. If I do game.items, I'll be able to see my items. And so on. Uh, we'll be working with game uh, dot. We'll be working with the game object in some of the macros we work on, but I highly recommend just kind of taking a moment uh, before you dive into writing any code and just exploring the game world system um, and seeing what the data looks like and how you can manipulate it. All right. Next, I want to cover probably one of the most commonly asked questions in Core How To. It's how to use role attributes um, on a role. So role attributes are things like uh, str strength or charisma or whatever attribute that, a, uh, that an actor has. How can you use it with an inline role? An example of using um, an inline role with a, uh, with a at role attribute is if I do 1d20 plus at health dot value. And you'll notice it rolled the 1d20 plus 10. And that's because this, uh, this uh, actor's uh, health is 10 HP. 
So how did I get that health.value? How do I know what that is? So one of the things you can do is use the roll data. Um, how do you get to the roll data? Let's create a macro to find out. First of all, we're going to switch this type of macro from chat to script uh, because we're going to be using the console. We're going to be printing stuff to the console. Then we do console.log. Um, console.log is going to log whatever we want inside of these parentheses to the console. Uh, then we're going to use one of the reserved keywords in a macro. There's four of them. The first one we're going to tackle is token. Token um, is defined if there's any selected token. If you don't have a token selected, it will be undefined. So let's go token.get role data. Uh, it might be token.actor actually. Token.actor get role data. What this is saying is of the token object, get the actor object, and from that actor object, get the role attribute data, and then we're nesting it inside a console.log, which basically says print it after you tell me what this information is. So if we execute it, we'll notice a, uh, an object gets printed out. The object says we have biography, we have health, we have items, we have power, and we have an str mod. So how does this translate into the role attribute? Well, we can reference any of these objects by adding an at in front of it in a chat, uh, in a chat macro. Uh, but let's do some values. So health has a max, min, and value. Um, let's change our actor's value to 5 and close that. Uh, and if we run our get role data command again, we'll notice health has changed. The value is 5, min is 0, max is 10. Uh, if we do r slash 1d20 plus at health, so that's this attribute, but you notice that this isn't just a number, it's a nested object with three more numbers inside of it. So we have to use dot notation, we put a dot right after health, and then we pick one of the values inside of it, so max, min, or value. If we did just health, it will give us zero, or actually it'll give us an error, because health is not a value, it's not a number. Um, it is, uh, it, this is what an error looks like. It's not a number, it's an object. We can't add an object, but if we do health, dot max, or let's do value again, it'll add 5 because we're getting a number object. So that's how you find out what are all of the role attributes that you can get off an actor. This will work across any system. It doesn't have to be simple world building system. It can be D&D, it can be Savage Worlds. Um, all you have to do is this simple macro, console.log, token actor, get role data. Um, um, I will try to have the code for all of these macros in a GitHub repository when I post this video. So if you want to see all of the, the commands that I typed, it'll be available there. But token.actor.getRollData nested inside a console log will output, uh, will output uh, the data to chat, and then you can use it in inline roles. Um, if you wanted to create a macro that did this automatically, let's go to chat. Uh, we'll switch the macro type to chat, and we'll roll 1d20 plus uh, at health dot value. And this, every time we press 1, it'll add the value. So say something happens and the value changes here. Uh, now it's 6. You'll notice it'll get updated to 6. And so you can have an easy macro that will always roll based on some attribute on the actor. Before we switch over to completely using um, script macros, I do want to cover chat macros really quickly. Uh, so if you're coming from Roll20, chat macros are what you are normally familiar with when someone says macros. You didn't even have the possibility of doing script macros in Roll20. Normally when we're talking about chat macros, uh, we're largely using die rolls. And you can find out all the different ways you can roll dice um, by going to uh, foundryvtt.com, hitting knowledge base, uh, and clicking rolling dice. Uh, I'm not going to cover all of these ways, there are tons and tons, but I am going to cover some of the most common ones. Uh, so let's open up Foundry again. So one of the most common uh, ones is keep highest. So for example, say you're in D&D and you're rolling with advantage, uh, you have 2d20, do I have caps on? 2d20, um, and you want to keep the highest rolls. If I just do uh, a slash r 2d20, it's going to add them together. 3 and 10 uh, adds 13. I want to keep the highest one, I can add an KH, keep highest. And if I execute it, I rolled an 18 and an 18. It dropped one of the 18, so it only rolled an 18. Uh, if we roll it again, uh, I rolled a 19 and 11. It dropped one of them and kept the highest. Okay, cool. 
What if I want to roll four of these bad boys, and I want to keep the uh, I want to keep the two highest one? So I want to drop two actually. So if I do KH two, I just put the number after it like so, and I hit execute macro, and I expand on this. You'll notice that I rolled an eleven, five, nine, and seven, and it dropped the five and seven to add the eleven and nine together to give me twenty. Another way to write this, instead of keep highest two. I can drop lowest 2, DL2, so 4D20, drop lowest 2. If I execute that, it'll roll uh, 13, 19, 4, and 20, and it dropped the 13 and 4 uh, to give me the 19 and 20. Fantastic. Next, uh, let's cover exploding dice. So if I'm rolling 4D4 die, um, 4D4 dice, um, what happens when they roll on the highest number? Can I explode them? Absolutely. That syntax is simply x equals, and if we hit execute here, we'll notice actually none of them exploded. That was a bad roll. Let's roll again. Uh, 44. There we go. We got some explosions and some crit fails. Uh, four exploded, and then another four exploded. If we execute this again, uh, we got just one explosion that time. Uh, and then finally, I want to talk about dice pool. So dice pools are using curly brackets like so. Um, so, for example, if I wanted to roll a d66, which is commonly done by rolling two d6s, um, I could do d6, comma d6, like so, and hit execute. And you'll notice it rolled 1d6 and 2d6, so in this case I rolled a 34. Um, I can keep highest or drop lowest just like this, so if I want to attach it to any dice and I want to say explode my d6 dice, I can do this. And then if either of these rolled, uh, and so the first one exploded, and it rolled another one, so then I got an 11 and a 3. Um, it adds them together under here. Don't worry about that. You can just click expand to see the individual rolls. So that's kind of a whirlwind on how to use chat macros. Um, and if you remember the previous section, you can also do things like adding um, token uh, or adding at health.value or any other roll value. Uh, and then it'll um, add something. Right now it's zero because I don't have any tokens selected. I don't have any tokens on the screen. But let's uh, pull that actor out. Let's click on it. Uh, let's see, health.value. And if I hit one, uh, it'll add 10 there, like so. And if we edit it, we'll notice that's because we added the add health.value. Uh, and we can nest these however we want. Um, so if we wanted to roll, for example, a 1d10, but the 10 was actually based on whatever the health.value is, I can do this. Um, and this will roll if we execute a 1d10 like so. Um, and if so, you had a different value for health.value, like 6 or 4 or whatever else, it would roll that die as well. Okay, now let's cover our first big macro. Um, it's actually going to be relatively simple, but it's going to cover a lot of complex topics. So what we're going to do is I've created a health potion here uh, that has an attribute called HP Restore. And what we're going to do is give it to this actor called Bad Actor. We're going to give him a couple health potions. Uh, and we'll actually edit this so he has five of them. And we're going to make it so we're going to make a macro that heals this actor and takes away a health potion every time he drinks it. So we're going to call it Drink Health Potion. It's going to subtract one health potion uh, and drink it. And if there are no more health potions left, it's going to error out on us. Um, so we're going to cover a lot of different topics. Let's get started. The first thing that I want to show you is actually how to set up a macro. Um, so we can start writing in it. So this is going to be a template that you're going to use whenever you write a script macro. Uh, there are two ways to go about this. One way that a lot of people use that I find incredibly ugly, um, and then the other way, which is the way I do it. So it's up to you which way you want to use. These are simply just syntactic sh uh, sugar. So the way that most people do this is they use something called an IFE, I-I-F-E. Uh, it stands for, uh, I think, in instantly invocable uh, function expression. It looks like this. Um, so if we wanted to write a macro, we would write this. Uh, and then we would do some code here. So maybe we want to do like so. And if we execute this, it'll print out hello world in the console. To me, this is incredibly ugly. I hate it. It, it looks terrible. So I'm not going to use this. I much prefer this method. Um, and I'll explain what I'm doing here in just a second. Basically, we're calling the function and then we're defining the function. 
Um, JavaScript doesn't care that you call it before you define it. Uh, and then if we want to do console.log, hello world. Okay, let's tap that in. It does the same exact thing. Uh, the word async here is not necessary, but uh, we often use it uh, in case we're going to be doing some asynchronous logic in our code. So a lot of the Foundry functions, things like creating entities, updating entities, etc., they happen asynchronously. The difference between asynchronous logic and synchronous logic is a little out of scope for this video. I suggest looking up asynchronous or async await on, um, uh, with JavaScript. Um, basically, uh, code gets executed out of order. So if you have two pieces of code, they might be getting executed at the same time. They don't necessarily get executed one after another. This is called asynchronous logic. So when that happens, sometimes we need to wait for the first piece of code to execute before we go to the next piece. Uh, and that's where we use async await. We're saying that this function is async, and then somewhere in the function we might have to wait for some code to finish uh, before we can go to the next piece. All right, next let's outline what we're going to build. So let's tab in, indent, and uh, we use these two dashes like so uh, to do a comment. A comment in JavaScript is something that will not get executed. It's, a, it's basically developer notes. It's a way for us to leave notes for ourselves. Um, comments can be used a lot of different ways. Here we're going to use it to outline our code and then we can go back and fill it in. So in the drink health potion function, first things we want to make sure is, is a token selected? If not, let's throw an error. Um, and I'm going to reduce this just a little bit. If not, let's error, just so we can fit it on one line. Um, next, let's say, does the token have a health potion? Otherwise, error. Um, let's do one, two, three, four. Otherwise, error. Next, what else should we ask? Should we uh, should we care if the health potion uh, can heal the target or not? Uh, let's uh, let's check if. Uh, if token is max health, if so, uh, don't you don't do anything. Is the token selected? If not, error. Does the token have a health potion? Otherwise, error. If a token is uh, max health, don't do anything. Um, otherwise, subtract a health potion. Um, and then what else? Increase token health. So this is our list of steps that we want this function to go through. Next, we're gonna actually write the code to make all of this possible. Okay, next, I'm actually going to pull a fast one on you. Um, the default editor is not that great for actually writing complex macros. So we're gonna copy what we did. I just wanted to show you how to use it if you really just wanna use it. And we're gonna paste this into a new file in VS Code. And I'm gonna call it drink potion dot uh, js. js means it's a javascript file. This way I can zoom in a little bit better, show you guys with syntax highlighting all of these beautiful colors uh, what's actually happening in the code. So I'm going to use VS Code and then when I want, uh, say I write some information here, console.log something, uh, and I can copy paste this. This is how I normally write my macros, uh, like so, and then save and execute. This is just because the standard default editor for macros doesn't support syntax highlighting. It's kind of hard to zoom in. Um, it's just not that great. So we're going to use uh, VS Code instead. Okay, so first of all, uh, let's tackle the first thing. Is a token selected? If not, error. How do we know if a token is selected? For that, we're actually going to use the canvas object. Uh, don't worry about my autocomplete. Uh, so canvas dot tokens dot controlled uh, zero uh, dot actor um, and actually this is while we will end up using this I want to break this down for you so we're going to console log some of this stuff console dot log um, tokens canvas dot tokens dot control 
The, uh, so this is going to go to the tokens object on canvas, so all of the tokens, and controlled specifically are the ones that are selected. So if we select a token, this is going to let, return to us a list. So let's go ahead and uh, copy this into our foundry, save our macro, uh, and let's say we have selected two tokens. Well, we can only select one at a time, but, uh, or can I? Can I select two? There we go, selected two. Uh, if I do, if I trigger the one macro, you'll notice tokens to it printed out two tokens that are selected. Uh, if I print, if I select just one and I trigger this macro, it's going to select just one. For our drink health potion macro, it's important to us that only one token is selected, and exactly one. So we don't want zero tokens selected, and we don't want more than one token selected. So how do we do that? Well, first, let's make an if statement. An if statement basically says if something's going to happen, you know, it's a conditional. You can learn more about them if you just Google JavaScript if statement. Um, canvas dot tokens dot controlled dot length equals equals zero. So this is saying if the length is zero, or canvas dot tokens. Oh, I spelled tokens wrong. Dot controlled dot length greater than one. So these are our two cases. If the, uh, if we have no token selected, that's the length is equal to zero of that array, or if we have more than one token selected, the length is greater than one, we're going to show the users a um, an error message. The error message is going to say, please select a single token. Sorry for all of my typos. And return. So what does this do? UI notifications uh, dot error info and warning uh, show up the little um, blue, red, and um, yellow bars that you'd normally see on the top of your screen on Foundry. And when I trigger this, you'll see what I mean. Uh, the return statement just exits the execution of the code. It says, don't do anything else. We're done here. Something broke. Or something happened. Or we completed so successfully. Whatever it was, we're just going to return from this. So let's take this. Let's copy this, oops, I meant to open Foundry, and uh, let's edit our macro. Let's save this. So here, if we select no tokens and we trigger this, we'll get a little red bar that says, please select a single token. If we have selected a token, nothing should happen. It'll just print out the token. Perfect, works as intended. All right, let's get back to our code. So what's next? Does this token have a health potion? So actually, um, at the end of our first block, now that we have determined that there is exactly one token select, we're going to call it token. Uh, so let basically says this is a new variable that we're defining. Um, a variable is uh, basically a container. It's, it's naming some different strings. So we're going to call it canvas tokens controlled zero. So because tokens uh, dot controlled, this is an array. We're saying give us the first element of the array. Uh, programmers all start their counting at zero, not at one. So first elements are always zero. Uh, so we want canvas.tokens.controlled zero. And we're going to assign it to the name token. Uh, and now let's see if the token has a health potion. Actually, we're going to do one more thing. Uh, we're not just going to call it token. We're going to do dot actor after it. So give me the actor object of this token, and we're going to call this actor. And the reason I want to do that is um, all of the functions that we want to call um, about the actor's inventory are actually on the actor, not on the token. The token is just a little thing on the screen with the picture on it. We actually want to reference the actor object, um, which is the sheet that has all the data in it. So let's find out if it has a health potion. So actor dot items, so the items that the actor has. Let me remove that so you can see the dot dot find find will well find something in that uh, in that list so in the items list find us something we have to tell it what we're looking for so we're looking for item where item uh, dot data dot name equals um, health potion now you might be wondering Deb how would I know that uh, the name of the item is item dot data not name and not just item dot name that's a good question. The way we find out if we do console.log actor 
we'll be able to tell everything about the actor. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to call it actor, like so. And so um, we'll be able to see the data model of the actor, and then you'll see how this works. And we're going to call this let health potion equals this. Cool. Let's copy this code into Foundry. Edit, paste, save macro. Uh, so let me clear my console here. If I trigger this, um, you'll see that the actor model gets printed out. And within the actor, we have the items property. Remember I said actor.items. Um, within items, that is a list, we see that there is this item, the first item. Um, items have apps, compendium, data, options. So remember how I said let's look in the data. So item.data and then it has a name, health potion. There we go. Uh, and then if we find it, let's go back to our code. We want to say if health potion not equals to, so the exclamation mark is a not, um, not equals to null um, or health potion not equal to undefined. These are the two failure cases in JavaScript. Either something is null or undefined. We're saying, it, um, actually, we should do it. If it's null or undefined, we'll throw an error. So equals equals um, is checking it, so it's an equality. Uh, not equals is not null or not undefined. So we're going to say if it is null or undefined, if there is no health potion, then we're going to throw another error, just like we did before. Notifications.error, no health potions left. And then we're going to return. Just like we did before, if we run into an error case, which is that there's no health potions, let's return. We're going to save this, we're going to copy it into Foundry, uh, save macro. So on this guy, there are health potions, so we should not err. Cool, there was no error. If we select this guy, there are no health potions. So theoretically, if I hit one, oops, I uh, accidentally, I think, deleted the macro. Let me put the macro back, save macro. It'll throw an error, no health potions left. And that's because there's no items that this has with health potions. And we can double check that here. Um, where if we check the, the items array, it is an empty array. There are no items that this actor has. Okay, for the next piece, we want to check if the health value for the actor is already its max value. If the actor is at max health, we don't want to apply a health potion. So how are we going to do this? In the actor, in the data object, there is another data object. So data.data.health dot uh, value and then there's max. So we want to check if the value of the health is equal to the max of the health. Let's go into our code and let's take a look at this. If actor.data.data.health.value equals actor.data.data.health.max, uh, throw another error. Uh, UI.notifications.error. Um, actor already at max health. And we want to go ahead and return. So, um, again, we found out that it was data.data.health.value by simply just looking at the actor. Uh, this is the actor object, so actor.data, and then there's another data object nested inside of it. And then within that data object, there's a health object, and within that health object, there are two values, value and max. Uh, so, if we take our code, and we copy it, and we put it in Foundry. Let's edit this macro, save macro. So this actor, bad actor, is at max health. So if I hit one, actor already at max health. There we go. If we subtract some health from it, let's say if it has five health, uh, there should be no error. It will just continue on, no error. After all that, now we're actually at the fun bit, subtracting a health potion and increasing the character's health. So we're, we're going to need to look for the health potion's quantity. Um, if we go to game.items, uh, we can actually see the items uh, objects. And so here I have a health potion object pulled up. 
and we can see that the quantity is under items dot data dot data dot quantity. Right now the quantity is one. That's because the default item health potion I've set the quantity to one. Um, if I looked at the items in that actor, the quantity here is going to be five. Whatever that number is, we just want to subtract it by one. Let's go in our code. Now here it's going to get a little bit tricky. I'm going to rewrite this just so you can follow along. Uh, health potion dot update. We're going to update the health potion. What are we going to update? Now, the thing is, we can only update um, the data object, the nested data object, so data dot data of the health potion. Because we can only update data dot data, we don't need to write the first data. And I know that's a little confusing to follow, but once I type out the code, I assure you it will become a little bit clear. Quantity. And uh, we want to set the new quantity to be health potion dot uh, data dot data dot quantity minus one. We want to subtract the quantity by one. <sighs> I wish there was an easier way to explain this, but when you're updating, the key that you're passing in only need, uh, will need to be basically this. Uh, but when you're referencing the data, you need to have uh, the whole object to reference it. Um, it's just the way Foundry is structured. I know it's a little confusing, but once you get the hang of it, it becomes easy to understand. Okay, so we have this function. Let's go ahead and save it uh, and copy it into Foundry. Edit, save macro. So right now, if we before we uh, do the macro, we see the quantity of the health potion is five. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and trigger our macro. I might have triggered it twice, and if we go check it, yeah, it, uh, it went down by two because uh, I triggered it twice by accident. I hit the button and I clicked it. If I click it again, you'll see that it goes down by one. I click it again, it goes down to one. Um, now it's going to start going into the negatives. So one of the things we have to do is make sure that there is at least one health potion or delete it after we hit zero. So let's go back to our code. Um, so in our code, let's add a little bit of better health, a um, uh, little bit of uh, error handling. Uh, so after we update it, we want to actually delete it if the quantity is zero. If health potion dot data dot data dot quantity after we update it, uh, and actually because update is an asynchronous, we're going to await it, and I'll mention what that means in just a second. Um, if it is zero, or actually, better yet, if it's less than one, so in case it goes to the negatives, um, health potion dot delete. So, await means that this asynchronous code should be run first before we check it. Otherwise, this quantity is going to be the old quantity. So we want the quantity to be updated before we check it. And then when we check it, we, we're going to make sure that it is less than one. And if it is less than one, we're going to delete it. If it's not less than one, fantastic. We're going to leave it alone. Uh, let's test out this code. Copy it into Foundry. Um, and so right now we have, let's change the quantity here back to five. Um, so if we look at it, it's five, and I hit the macro, it's going to go to four, three, two, one, zero. And we notice on the sheet it actually deleted the health potion. It is no longer there. So after we have used up all the health potions, it gets deleted. Okay, now to the last part, increasing the token's health. Let's outline this a little bit more as well, just so we know um, what we're doing here. Firstly, we want to make sure... Uh, we already checked if the token is at max health, but we want to check if the new health is going to be greater than um, the max health. Uh, if so, we want the new health to be max health. So if, for example, you have 6 health and you drink a potion that restores 5, we don't want to make you have 11 out of 10 health, we just want you to have 10 out of 10 health. Um, and that's it. Actually, that's all we need to do. Um, oh, and actually update the token's health to be the new health. So let's do 
uh, new health equals actor dot data dot data dot attributes. Uh, I believe that's what it was. No, it's data dot data dot health dot value plus. Uh, now we want to add the health potion uh, dot data dot data. Mm. Attributes dot HP restore. Uh, dot value. How do we know this? How do we know that it's going to be data dot data dot attributes dot HP restore dot value? Uh, we look in the data object. So here we have bad actor. Bad actor has uh, an item. That item is health potion. Within the health potion, we have a data object. Within the data object, we have an attributes object. Within the attributes object, we have an HP restore object. Within the HP restore object, we have a value. So that's how we know uh, how many nested levels there are. I know some of the times this, uh, this stuff can seem confusing, but after you get a little bit familiar with it, it all starts making sense. Um, and you kind of figure out where to look for all of this information. So if new health is greater than actor.data.data.health.max, new health equals actor.data.data.health.max. So if it is greater than the max, let's set it to the max. And now update the actor health. Um, yeah, let's do that. So updating the actor's health, actor.update. What are we updating? It's, oops, sorry. Uh, data dot health dot value and we want that to be the new health value and that should be good uh, we can await this as well if we want and then we can do a UI dot notifications dot info actor drink a health potion and actually, if we want, and I'll, I'll show you how to do this in just a minute after I show you that this works, we're going to replace the word actor with the name of the actor instead. So let's do this first. Let's copy this. Let's open up Foundry. Let's edit this macro. Put the new code in. Right now I have bad actor. Bad actor has 5 out of 10 health. They're going to drink a health potion. And it's going to restore their health. They actor drank a health potion. Now it's 10 out of 10 again. Okay, now one final thing I want to show you is how do you replace the word actor with the actual actor name? Uh, for that, we're going to need something called template strings. So we've been using double quotes. Double quotes are great for regular strings. Regular strings are just, a, a string is basically just characters. A template string uses the tick mark, like so. Uh, the tick mark is the key left of the one key on a US keyboard. And it lets us do things like this. If we do dollar sign curly brackets, we can insert code in the middle of a string. Why would we want to do this? Well, we can, uh, we can fill this template out with some data. So if we do this, it'll actually print bad actor drank a health potion. So if we do this, we copy this into Foundry, uh, edit, save macro. I'm going to reduce the health again of this actor, and I hit 1. It'll now say bad actor, the name of the actor, drank a health potion. If I change his name to Bob, and I um, let's reduce his health again, Bob drank a health potion. So that's how you use template strings. They're really powerful. You can do a ton of stuff with them. Um, basically, all, all you have to do is use tick marks, and then dollar sign, curly brackets, and you can insert code. And you can insert inequalities, you can insert functions, you can insert a whole bunch of stuff right in the center there. Uh, and that's our first macro. That's our first complex macro, Drink Health Potion. Um, this, the code for this will be on a GitHub repo that will be linked in the description. So if you want to reference this code, you want to follow along and write your own macro, feel free. All right, that closes out our first Macros 101 video. So we covered chat macros, we covered how to use the console, how to explore the system's data. Uh, we also made a fairly complex first macro, which uh, drinks a health potion and updates a character's um, attributes based on that, uh, specifically health. For our next video, I have some stuff planned where we'll cover rolling dice. 
uh, in a macro, um, not just to chat macro dice, but how to actually use the roll API in Foundry to um, roll some dynamic formulas, apply some stuff, um, and output all of that information to chat. So we'll be covering all of that. If you have any suggestions or uh, you want to see something specific coming up in one of the videos, please leave a comment down below. I would love to cover it. And make sure to like this video and subscribe so I know that there's an audience, there are people watching this. Okay, uh, thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something from this video. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on Discord. Thank you.